Hello everybody and welcome back again. This video grew bigger and bigger. It started out as being a quick tip again, but I discovered more and more that I decided to make a whole video about everything I know or could figure out about zooming in Ethel Studio. And believe me, I found a whole lot while researching what was completely new to me too. So perhaps you can take away one or the other new thing for you as well. So let's go into the topic. ImageLine has vastly improved the zooming features in FL Studio over the time. And I think meanwhile, we have reached a point which can satisfy everybody, no matter what's your personal preference. During this video, please keep always an eye on these modifier keys here on the top. And please note that the possible depth of zooming in FL Studio is always related to the project's PPQ settings, no matter which method you use. And please note that the outcome of predefined zoom settings, like for example the number key method, depends on the project length and the project track count. So don't wonder if you get different results to what I show here. For example, this is a full-blown project zoomed out completely by the number 4 preset. While this is how the same action looks like, if just a part of tracks and clips are present. We have still our older methods available. Page up and down. I don't know if these are the same on Mac. Zooming in and out by using the mouse cursor as center point as long as possible. When zooming out, for example, at some point it has to leave this behavior though. Or for example, I spoke already about the number key presets 1 to 6. I just exclude number 6 here, which just works if the playlist has turned on performance mode, which I think people using rarely. Note, if you have typing keyboard to piano enabled, you have to hold shift to make them work, as otherwise these numbers just trigger the current selected instrument. If typing keyboard to piano is turned off, typing the number keys alone is enough. I personally would recommend to have typing keyboard to piano turned off by default and just activate it when you need it by for example the shortcut Ctrl or Command T. This makes the usage of shortcuts in general a whole lot easier in FL Studio. By the way, we are talking about the numbers on the top of the keyboard not the ones on the number pad. They are selecting patterns 1 to 9, while 0 is fast forward during play. This is an old but still powerful zoom preset system, as you can often achieve what you want with just a single key press. Number 1 zooms out quite far. In a project of 197 bars, we are reaching at least 169 bars. Number 2 zooms into a quite usable workspace of nearly 30 bars in this example. Number 3 zooms in more to what one already could name a detail view. Well, there's a downside to especially number 2 and 3. They zoom in, but they use the previous way to set which part of the project will be visible and that's not very comfortable to use. The old way of setting a kind of an anchor point for certain actions is the leftmost edge of the playlist, which means everything which is visible first from the left hand side will stay visible after zooming in. But especially number 4 is quite handy to quickly zoom out to the full project. The main difference to number 1 is that it zooms out vertically as much as possible to show all tracks too. This is perfect for having a complete overview over the project again with a single key press. Number 5 zooms to selection as much as possible. While here number 4 brings us back again to reset the vertical zoom too. A little hidden trick number 4 is capable of it's a toggle to flip between the last zoom setting you had and the full project. Not everybody is a big fan of keyboard shortcuts though. And I think one of the most popular methods of zooming in FL Studio are control and mouse wheel for horizontal 
and Alt plus mouse wheel for vertical zoom. I think on Mac you have to hold Command and Option for that to work. These have been always the more standard ways of zooming. Together with the zoom tool and resizing the scroll bar. Or since the first playlist overhaul, the option to click and drag the lower part of a track when the cursor turns into a double arrow to resize single tracks individually. This works since some of the later updates on multiple selected tracks too, as well as the vertical track height numeric presets in the right-click menu, or for all tracks in the menu of the playlist. This is perfect for going back exactly to your preferred track height setting. But there's a lot more some perhaps have missed. For example, we do have an Ableton style of horizontal zooming with the scroll bar, while left click drag or mouse wheel on the scroll bar scrolls and resizing the edges zooms. But we can combine both at the same time. Right click drag on the scroll bar. Move the mouse left or right for scrolling and up or down for zooming, respectively everything in between. That's pretty sensitive, but with a bit of practice it's a very mighty tool. This method lets you for example scroll or zoom out as far as you like and it allows you working quickly, very quickly. Holding Ctrl or Command locks your movement to the vertical axis that you have a zoom tool without accidentally scrolling. Alternatively, you can use Alt or Option on Mac plus middle mouse button drag. It's the same thing. While we are at it, simple left click drag on the middle mouse button gives you a pan tool to quickly move inside your project. But that's not all you can do with the scroll bar. Holding Ctrl or Command, watch what happens when I left click drag on the scroll bar. This is very comfortable to work with. And when you need better oversight on the mini preview of your project, just put it to double height. A single control or command left click zooms completely into this point in the playlist. Very handy when you quickly want to jump to clearly identifiable spots in your project with maximal zoom or via click and drag to use it as a starting point. This feels really really good to work with. Try it out if you haven't already. You will see what I mean. Quick and efficient with lots and lots of control. On the field for vertical zooming, we can use left click drag, mouse wheel scroll and Alt or Option plus left click to reset to default. This vertical default refers to what you have set your track height. And all of these actions for vertical zooming respect different settings for individual tracks. It zooms relatively and Alt or Option click on the vertical zoom field to reset will respect this too. As already said, you can Alt or Option mouse wheel anywhere you like in the playlist and it will behave the same in regards of individual track heights. Alternatively, you can use here Control or Command on Mac plus your middle mouse button drag to zoom vertically by moving the mouse up or down. There's a quite handy option in the right-click menu to lock individual tracks to the last set track height. As if that wasn't enough already, we got an option to perform zooming directly on the timeline. Most of you will know that right-click drag or control command left-click drag makes a time selection. But did you try Ctrl or Command right click drag? Ctrl or Command right click will zoom out to full project, horizontally only. This is the main difference to the number 4 zoom out. 
While being a toggle as well, it leaves your vertical zoom state alone. This is the only automatic full zoom out I found, which doesn't resize your track heights. It depends now on the situation which method to use. After a detail zoom, which sets the track height to max, it's probably better to use number 4, for having a better overview when going back. If you have just zoomed in far horizontally and your track heights still are set how you like them, Ctrl or Command right click the timeline might be the better way. But this is still not all. We have our zoom tool, where left click drag defines the zoom range, but to avoid having to change to the zoom tool, you can hold Ctrl and Alt or Command and Option on the Mac and right click drag for detail zoom to any part in your project like the tool does. Holding the same modifiers and do a simple right click brings you back to full project including vertical zoom reset like number 4 does. And it's a toggle too. Finally, you can shift Ctrl or shift Command on Mac right click a clip to zoom just to this clip or do a maximal zoom on any other empty space in the playlist. This sadly isn't a toggle, so best if you use the number 4 shortcut to go back. In my opinion, ImageLine did a fantastic job to give you a variety of options from which you can choose your favorite methods, even for different situations. They have vastly improved the whole experience. Still, I'm sure I missed some options, but I don't know if we really need even more. If you are aware of any, please tell me in the comments. I wish you happy zooming and see you next time.